Now this is a video I've been wanting to do for quite a while. It's the review of the Sony 85mm f1.8. Now we have had this lens for probably getting close to a year now and we really haven't used it that much but um, like I said it was it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while just getting around to getting that time to do it. Now I do have a bit of free time at the moment so yeah I'm going to give you um, a little bit of a overview of the lens and show some examples some photos on it. I haven't done any video clips on it although it's probably more than capable of being a very good video lens we bought it primarily for stills shooting so that's what I'm going to be uh, concentrating on here in this video today so yeah first things first it is a full frame lens it has a plastic hood on it which is yeah it's, it's okay it's a little bit flimsy but not too bad cap of course now it does have a 67 mil filter thread on it I'm sure you can see the writing on there at all and it has a close focusing distance of 0.8 of a meter or 2.63 feet and it's a fe 1.8 85mm lens from Sony. Now on the side it has a manual focus autofocus switch and a customizable button. Haven't programmed the button for anything but um, yeah we probably will once we start using a little bit more but I'm not really 100% sure on what you can uh, assigned to that button. I haven't dug into those details, but um, yeah, we'll um, carry on with this. Now, one thing I find with the Sony cameras, all the camera, all the Sony bodies, the full frame bodies, is that probably you can see there's not a lot of room there between the the grip and the lens. As you can see, my hands are almost, and my fingers are almost touching that lens that is because of as you can see the lens mount is mounted almost in the middle of the, the camera body if they moved it over a little bit this way you'd have had a little bit more room and hold that thought for a minute <coughs> Now as you can see by my Panasonic S5, although it hasn't got the same type of lens on it, but you can see the distance between the lens mount and the side of the camera is uh, a lot slimmer, a lot smaller than the Sony, the Sony camera. Even with this um, L grip off, there's still more room between the edge of the lens mount and the side of the camera so you get less room with larger lenses on the Sony body. So that's one thing I wish Sony would change is the positioning of the lens mount on the bodies to give you a bit more room especially with lenses like this. Now back to the 85mm lens. Now other than the switch and the customizable button the only other um, thing you've got on here is the focus ring which turns pretty smoothly no hard stops of course it's all focused by wire nowadays but that's fine they work pretty well anyway um, I'll put up on screen the size and weight of it I just haven't got that in front of me at the moment yeah I'm a bit out of touch with videos at the moment I haven't been doing much lately um, between one thing and another but anyway, so as you see by the front element, it's quite a big chunk of glass there, which lets, lets in lots of light, which, yeah, it's, we've tested it um, at f1.8, f2.5, right up to, I think, f13. Now, I'll 
put on screen a selection of images I've done with this lens, both my wife and myself. Most of these images are from um, uh, my wife using the camera. And um, so yeah, there's a, there'll be a selection of images there and then I'll come back and talk about um, a couple of the other images that we did um, at different focal lengths and, and so on. So I'll run those clips now and see what you think. A heart speed to the city streets We begin to feel the fire We rise like tall buildings As the chemicals they take us higher The night's young and it's just begun she puts her hand in mine We wanna chase the night Wanna dance to the light Pulls us from the sky Just two hearts running wild Never sleep, never stop Every shot from the top We're gonna, we're gonna be Two hearts running wild So I hope you like the, that selection of photos from this uh, 85mm f1.8. I have cropped and edited them slightly, but um, otherwise, yeah, they're pretty, pretty standard sort of photos. Now the next couple are just like a little fern in the garden out here. Now the first one was taken at f1.8 and then another one at f7.1. So I put them up on screen and you can see the difference between f1.8 and f7.1 um, close up there's probably only about uh, well at, at the minimum focusing distance about 0.8 of a meter. Now the next one I put a 16mm Kinko extension tube on the camera and this is a portrait style um, photo and you can see the, the difference in um, between that and the one without the extension tubes and that was taken with at um, f13 now the next two some of these photos are taken like with the with the aperture wide open and then stop it down so um, the next couple are of a little shrub, like a colourful little shrub, I can't remember the name of it now, um, that we just put in the garden recently. So the morning light, uh, the sun was coming on it early, early in the morning here, and so I took a couple of photos, one at f1.8 and f13. Now the next two are similar sort of vein that f1.8 and stop down. Uh, so we have f1.8 and then f10 is a little sheet little um it's only about probably 40 centimeters long a little model of a sheep um sort of cartoon style sort of sheep i suppose <laughs> eyes really close together now the first one i focused on his nose so the eyes are out of focus so you can see the depth of field there the second one i focused on his eyes and you see there's more in focus on that at f13 sorry f10 <laughs> i'm getting the muddle up on here now the last two one on the one of the badge on my subaru at f1.8 so and that was quite close that was at the like about the minimum focusing distance i can get to it's as close as i can get to it and the next one is of um, a row of shrubs we've got in the garden at f2.8 and you can see it's sort of backlit um, you can see the, the the bokeh in the background of um, the picture on the leaves I think there's a little bit of moisture on the leaves so you can see the background the, bo the bokeh in the background but yeah it's um I like the images that come out of, out of this um, 
lens and camera combo. I do like the camera anyway. <laughs> it's got such good resolution on it, so you can crop in, you can crop in quite a bit and still get a decent resolution of um, image on it. But the lens, yeah, it's it's a it's a nice lens with um, like I say, a big glass element at the front to get lots of light in. So I hope you like those images and the short little um, review of that lens, the 85mm f1.8 from Sony. So I do have a couple more videos coming up very soon. One is of the Sony 40mm f2.8 for full frame. There's going to be a review of the Panasonic S1R from I think 2019 I think that came out. I'll be doing a review on that uh, with whole lots of images and I'll try and get some video samples done with that as well. And there's another old vintage camera that um, is coming up for a review as well That's um, that I've got a hold of. Uh, and that's from I believe 2012, 2011, 2012 I think it is. But uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe to if you want to see some more of these sorts of um, reviews, on, especially on older cameras and stuff like that. Um, hit that like button if you like the video, and throw in a comment down below if there's something you'd like to see. Uh, maybe I can get a hold of it and review it. Um, yeah, so thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.